Blessed is our God who is now and forever to the ages of ages.
me thoroughly from my lawlessness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my lawlessness and, and my sin is always before me against you. Only I have sinned and have done evil in your sight that I may just testify in your words and overcome. You are judged. For, for behold, I was conceived in transgressions and sins. My mother bore me. Behold, you love truth. You show me the unknown and secret things from your wisdom. You shall sprinkle me with essence, and I will be cleansed. You shall wash me, and I will be made whiter than snow. You shall make me hear joy and gladness. My bones that were humbled shall greatly rejoice. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my transgressions. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your guiding spirit. I will teach your ancestors your ways, and I gladly shall turn back to you. Deliver me from your blood baldness, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall greatly rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For if you desire sacrifice, it would be a bit. You will be pleased with the whole burnt offerings. A sacrifice to God is a broken spirit. A broken and humble heart God will despise. Do good, O Lord, in your good pleasures to Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with offerings and over an offering that shall they offer young bulls at the altar. Master Christ, have mercy on your servants. The unction of your compassion never cheers the souls and bodies alike amongst your servants. Master, and with the oil you protect believers all. So now to us who come to you, you hold the unction be all merciful. today. 
power of man, and you commanded that sick believers should call your God, you ministers to pray, and anoint with your holy unction, O Lord, and thereby be cured and saved. In your mercy, save those who suffer now.
Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Pity us the mercy of Savior, deliver us from pain and peril. Rescue us, your servants, body, for we are targets of the devil's arrows. But since you are the merciful Lord, hear us, their heal us, their early, by grace divine. Of your delights which remain in your 
according to his abundant greatness. For I'm on high now sanctified, and rid your servants of all disease. Through the sacred anointing with your mercy, ye and my touch of your priests, O Savior, wash away and purge them of all impurities of soul and from all scandals. O Lord, deliver them. Relieve their toil and trouble and make their afflictions all disappear. Keep disasters away from them. O Deliverance from affliction, wrath, 
without danger and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our own holy, through our most blessed and glorious Lady, the pale Clopus and Ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our God. You belong all glory and honor and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, who in your mercy and bounty heals the disorders of souls and bodies, sanctify this oil so that those who shall be anointed with it may be healed and free from every passion, illness of body, uncleanness of flesh, and spirit and from all evils, that in this too your all holy name may be glorified, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages.
as saying, Teacher, what shall, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He said to him, You have answered right. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion, and went to him and bound up his wounds. Pouring on oil and wine, then he sent him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, saying, and gave him to the innkeeper, take care of him. Whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed mercy on him. And he said to him, Go and do thy
And also in this day who shall be anointed with this oil of rebirth may be strong against their adversaries and may shine in the radiance of your saints, having neither spot nor wrinkle, and that they may be admitted into your eternal rest and receive the award of the calling from above. For yours it is to show mercy and to save us, O God, our God. To you we ascribe glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. You are sorrowful for our evil deeds, and you know 
know how the mind of man leans towards wickedness, even from his youth. You, des you do not desire the death of a sinner, but rather that he should repent and live. For the salvation of sinners, though being God, you became a created being for the sake of your creatures. You have said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You sought the wandering sheep, you searched diligently for the lost coin, and having found it, you said, He that comes to me, I will not cast out. You did not abhor the sinful woman who washed her precious feet with her tears. You said, As often as you fall, get up, and you shall be saved. It is you who said there is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. O merciful Master, look down from on high, giving us your sinful and unworthy servants. Shelter under the grace of the Holy Spirit in this hour, and take up your abode in these your servants, who acknowledge their iniquities and draw near to you in faith. Accept them because of your love for mankind, forgiving them whatever they have done amiss, whether by word, deed, or thought, and cleanse them from every sin, and abiding ever present with them, preserve them for the remaining years of their life, that walking ever in your statutes, they may in no way again become the object of joy to the devil, so that also in these your all holy name may be glorified. For yours it is to show mercy and to save us, O Christ our God, and to you we ascribe glory together with your Father, who is from everlasting, and your all holy good and life breathing spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Let us be attentive.
Then we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, protection, forgiveness, remission of the sins of the servants of God. All those present for this holy sacrament for the forgiveness of their every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Be right, merciful God who loves mankind, and to you we give glory to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Almighty Master, Holy King who chastens yet does not put to death, who supports those who fall and raises those who are downtrodden, who heals our physical afflictions, we entreat you, our God, that you bring your mercy on this oil to those who are anointed with it in your name, that it may be effectual unto the healing of soul and body, unto cleansing and deliverance from every infirmity, illness, malady, and every defilement of body and soul. Yes, Lord, send down from heaven your healing power. Touch the body, quench the fever, soothe the pain, and banish every ailment. Become the physician of these your servants, raise them up, and heal their suffering. Grant that they may be given to the church full and in restored health pleasing you and abiding by your will. For yours it is to show mercy and to save us, O our God. To you we ascribe glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us be attentive. Wisdom. Let us be attentive. The presence of the Lord, the temple was the living God, and as God said, I will live in them and move among them, and I will be your God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from them, and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch nothing unclean, then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have been promised to love you, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, and make holiness perfect in the fear of God.
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. O gracious, loving, compassionate, ever merciful Lord, plenty, full in mercy, and rich in beneficence, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who through your holy apostles have empowered us to heal the infirmities of your people by oil and prayer, confirm this oil unto the healing of those who shall be anointed with it for relief of every ailment and every battle, for deliverance from the evils of those who have infirm hope await salvation from you. Yes, our Master, Lord, our God, we pray to you, the Almighty, that you will save us all, only physician of our souls and bodies, sanctify us all as healer of every malady. Heal also these your servants. Raise them up from their bed of pain, that through the mercies of your goodness, visit them in your mercy and compassion. Cast out from them every sickness and malady, so that being healed by your mighty hand, they may serve you in all thanksgiving, that even now, sharing in your ineffable love, we may sing praises and glorify you, who do great and wondrous things with glorious and transcendent. For yours it is to show mercy and to save us, O our God, and to you we ascribe glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us be attentive. Wisdom. Let us be attentive.
For you are a merciful God who loves mankind, and to you we ascribe glory. To the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O Lord our God, you chasten and again heal. You lift the indigent from the ground and dung him. Father of orphans and haven of the tempest tossed. Physician of the ailing who without toil bears our weaknesses and accepts our infirmities. It is you who cheerfully show mercy and pass over our iniquities, taking away our unrighteousness, quick to help and slow to wrath. You breathed on your disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive, the, if you remit the sins of any, they are remitted. It is you who accept the repentance of sinners and have the power to pardon countless and grievous sins. Bestowing healing upon all who continue in weakness and long in great illness. It is you, Lord, who have also called me your humble, sinful, and unworthy servant, caught up in my many sins and wallowing in the pleasures of life to the holy and exceedingly lofty degree of the priesthood, and to enter within the innermost veil into the holy of holies, where the holy angels desire to penetrate the face of the Lord God, announcing that tidings and to behold within their own eyes the presence of the sacred oblation, and to enjoy the divine and sacred liturgy. Lord, you deem me worthy to minister your heavenly mysteries and offer to use gifts and sacrifices for our sins and the ignorances of the people, and to mediate for your reason and thou sheep, so that through your great and ineffable love for mankind, you may blot out their transgressions. O merciful King, Hear the voice of my prayer at this hour and holy day, and at all times and places, and to these your servants who are ailing in soul and body, grant your healing, remitting their sins, and pardoning their transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, treating their incurable wounds and every ailment and malady. Give health to their souls, you who touched Peter's mother-in-law, who, having been cured of her fever, arose and ministered to you. O Master, grant healing and deliverance from every devastating pain to these your servants. Remember your mercies and compassion, and that the mind of man inclines toward evil from his youth, and that no one is without sin upon the earth. For you alone are without sin. You came and saved the human race and set us free from the bondage of the enemy. For if you enter into judgment with your servants, none will be found clean from stain, but every mouth shall be sealed, not having any defense. For as is discarded rags, is all our righteousness before you. Therefore, O Lord, remember not the sins of our youth. For you are the hope of the hopeless and the rest of those who labor and are heavy laden with iniquity, and to you we send up glory together with your Father, who is from everlasting in your all holy good and life, great spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us be attentive. Gospel according to Matthew. Let us be 
And as you hearken from Hezekiah in the sorrow of his soul at the hour of his death and cannot overlook his prayer, in like manner hear me, your humble, sinful, and unworthy servant, praying to you at this hour. For you are the Lord, Jesus Christ, who in your mercy and love for mankind commanded us to forgive those who fall into sin even seven times seven, who laments over our wickedness and rejoices over the return of those who have strayed. For as is your majesty, so also is your mercy. And to you we ascribe glory, together with your Father, who is from everlasting, and your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and forever, to the ages of ages. You may be seated at this time. Let us be attentive. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul, first letter to the third the Thessalonians. Let us be attentive. Brother, we exalt you, acknowledge the idols, encourage the faith harder, help the weak, be patient with all, with them all. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks to all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophesying. But test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you holy, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless in the, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be to you. The reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the holy gospel. Peace be unto all. The reading is from the holy gospel according to Matthew. Let us be attentive. that time, Jesus passed on from there. He saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he sat at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. But when 
we come to a holy unction, we recognize the healing that God gives us, not only in the sacrament of confession, but how it's a complete, this is a totality thing. You can't just take one sacrament and say, oh, I like this one. I'm not going to receive that one. No, we, we take them as a progression. We go through we go through them all, especially the ones that we are supposed to keep uh, the, the ones that we are supposed to keep uh, receiving in our lives. So when we have confession, and then we go to unction, we see the healing effect of it, and then we move from our unction. And uh, when we grew up in the faith, uh, you know, especially when we were younger, we had the had the thing. Okay, we went to confession. Now we have unction on Holy Wednesday, and what's going on tomorrow morning? Divine, the Holy and Divine Communion. For many people uh, growing up, Holy Thursday morning was the only time in the whole year that they would receive communion. They would, they would save up for that period of time. They would go through these, these things because they had this mindset that this is how they had to prepare, and Holy Week was the perfect way of doing that. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit there and tell you that this was right, wrong, or indifferent. It's the perfect way to go through it without question. But at the same time, it is not exclusive just to that period of time. And we don't necessarily always need these sacraments in, in, in succession like this in order to be worthy to come and approach the Holy uh, Sacrament of, of Divine Communion. But Holy Thursday morning is definitely a special day. It's the institution of the Holy Innocent Himself, which we are continuing to celebrate every time we come together. So when we see these um, sacraments kind of bunched together in this week, it, it starts to make sense. Ah, oh, okay, healing, healing, healing. Ah, oh, wonderful. What? This is important. And so the, the natural thought process should be, why is the church giving us all these healings? Why is the church doing all of this? Why do we need to be healed? Is it just for the remission of sins, or are we infirmed in other ways? But the, the bigger picture and the thing that we have to walk away from this is to understand that when the church is giving us and offering us healing, and we are here to partake of it, we are saying something. And we may not want to admit it, but we're saying something. If you're here, you're saying to the Lord, I am sick. That's what we're saying. If you're here today, especially today, you're saying to the Lord, I am sick. Now many of us have bodily ailments that are bothering us. Some of us, I'm looking out and I see, I know that there are people that are struggling in their bodies without question. There are people that, you know, they get exhausted, they get tired, they have this, or they have a pain, or they have a this, or they have a that, or whatever it is that they've got. We've got, you know, and for me, it's in between my ears, that's what my pain is. But that's just me. But that's the thing. We have to recognize the, the, the fact that if we are here, we are saying, I am sick. But maybe we don't have bodily ailments. Maybe we're okay. Maybe the doctor just gave us a cholesterol check and said, hey, you're good. We feel it off. Go. But you're still here. It's because you're saying, I am sick. And maybe we're struggling to find out what is it. What is that thing within ourselves that really is hurting us? What is that thing within our soul that's really causing us pain? What is that thing within our soul that's saying, hmm, maybe I didn't have a good day today, or this, or this week, or this month, or maybe this whole year has been good. Whatever. Whatever's going on. Recognize first the reality. We are sick. That's the binding tie of all these prayers. That's the binding tie of everything that Christ did when he came during this week to heal us. Christ's presence on this earth was first and foremost a healing presence. And when we see everything, when we see the salvific efforts that he made on the cross first as healing, it helps us approach appropriately these days, and all days, really. But there's another thing. This is the beautiful thing about option that we sometimes miss. It is in the beginning of the service, and sometimes we lose track of it towards the end because we're so focused on our sins. Because oil is not just used for anointing to heal. What was the other thing that oil was used for? Who else was anointed? Kings. Yes. Kings. Kings were anointed. 
things where I'm like, God's yeah, very smart. You're such a developer. It's my mother. were anointed. Why were they anointed? Well, because God told them to, but for, but for a purpose. They were sent out. The anointing and the, the prison or, or the anointing that they received was a purposeful anointing. In other words, you were anointed and set off to do whatever it was that you were supposed to be doing. This oil from the prophet, whoever it was, was setting them off to go and proclaim something or to go and do a job or to go and be empowered. If we lose track of our sinfulness and we are wallowing in it, we will lose the second part of this oil. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we'll lose it. And what we're losing is the fact that God is not giving us this oil so that we can keep it in. Yeah, it's for our healing, for sure. But God's not giving it to us to keep it in. God is giving it to us so that we may be healed, first, second, empowered to do what? To be as kings and queens. We are royalty to the Lord. That's how important we are. That if there was only one sinful person on the earth, the cross still would have been in play for us. He still would have done it, even if there was only one of us. That the entire universe is not worth the life of one soul that needs God. We are the ones that are supposed to be empowered by this oil. We are the ones that are supposed to be healed and forgiven by this oil. We are the ones that are supposed to take that healing and go proclaim what God is, has, and will continue to do in our lives. That's the purpose of this holy oil on this day. And every time we come to this act, to empower, to heal us first, we have to recognize we are sick. Forget that first part. Don't get caught up in being in power. Hey, 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 all the next time, okay, I'm a queen. You know, like, let's go. No, we still have to be here because we're sick. But, but secondly, we're supposed to be in power. We're supposed to be set off. We're supposed to look at what God has done for us and allow for us to receive that beautiful and blessed cleansing that gives us the joy to speak the goodness to others. That's the joy of this. But we know that there are many who have afflictions. And we don't turn our back on those as a church. And so we're going to continue our service in just a moment here. And we're going to ask at a specific point, I'm going to ask for those individuals who have specific ailments that they really want to be healed from. If they would like, I will lift the gospel over their heads, so, you know, as many as you speak here. Whether it's ailments in their body or ailments in their soul, I will lift the gospel and hold it over their heads. If anyone that feels that they don't want to necessarily come forward, I'll ask you also to kneel at that time, and I will raise, raise the gospel over everyone. But the, some people, uh, we have a tradition for those individuals that want to have the gospel directly on them, that they are, they are, uh, uh, they are allowed to come forward for that. So, I'm going to ask you to stand and we'll continue our service at this time. <laughs> have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, protection, forgiveness, and remission of the sins of the servants of God, all those present for this holy sacrament, for the forgiveness of their every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. For you are a merciful God who loves mankind, and to you give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. 
O Master, Lord our God, physician of our souls and bodies, it is you who soothe the chronic pains and heal every infirmity and malady of the people. You desire that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of truth, and that you will not the death of the sinner, but rather that he should repent and live. For you, O Lord, in the Old Testament, ordained repentance for sinners, for David and the Ninevite, Ninevites, and for those who before and after them. But also in the new dispensation of your coming in the flesh, you called not the righteous, but sinners to repentance, like the publican, the harlot, the robber, the blasphemer, and the great persecutor Paul, receiving them all through repentance. Peter, your great apostle, who denied you three times, you received the repentance, and promised him, saying, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, merciful and loving God, encouraged by your faithful promise, we pray and entreat you at this hour. Hear our prayer and accept it as, you, as incense offered to you. Visit these your servants, and if they have transgressed either the word or deed or thought by night or by day, and if they have come under the curse of a priest or under their own anathema, or have sworn an oath, we pray to you, loose, pardon, and forgive them, O God, overlooking their transgressions and their sins, committed, committed by them knowingly or in ignorance. And if they have transgressed your commandments or have erred as bearing flesh and living in this world, or by the prompting of the devil, forgive them as a merciful and loving God. For there is no one who lives and does not sin. Only you are sinless. Your righteousness is to all eternity, and your word is true. You do not create man for destruction, but for the keeping of your commandments, and to inherit life and corrupt them. To you we ascribe glory, together with your Father, who is from everlasting, your all holy good life, great in spirit, now and forever, to the ages of ages. <coughs> I would ask at this time, Anyone that would like to be have the have the gospel over their heads that has uh, a specific ailment, please come forward and kneel before her. Everyone else, please kneel in the pews where you are. Let us pray to the Lord. O holy King, compassionate and most merciful Lord Jesus Christ, Son and Word of the living God, who does not desire the death of a sinner, but that they may return to you and live. I do not place my sinful hand on the heads of those who approach you in sins. You ask from you, through me, forgiveness of sins, but do you stretch out your mighty and powerful hand in this holy gospel, which I hold over the heads of your servants, and beg and implore your compassion and love for mankind, which does not remember evil, O God our Savior, who through your prophet Nathan granted forgiveness to David of his sins when he repented, and received the Nassus prayer of repentance, you yourself and your customary love for mankind, accept these your servants, who repent over their offenses, overlooking all their transgressions. For you are our God, who commanded us to forgive those who fall into sins unto seventy times seven. Because as your majesty is, so is your mercy. And, and to you belong all glory, honor, and worship. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, to the ages of ages. Is your name healing? Let us pray to the Lord. O Holy Father, heal and physician of our souls and bodies. We send your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to heal every infirmity and to deliver from death. Heal these your servants from their elements of body and soul, and thou them with life. This we ask by the grace of your Christ, through the intercessions of our all holy lady, that thou call us never Virgin Mary, by the power of the precious and life giving cross and protection the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, so the case the honorable glorious prophet and forerunners of the Baptist, the holy glorious praise for the apostle, the glorious friend of martyrs, the venerable God of the Son of God, of the holy unmercenaries and hearers, healers, was Masa de Menos, curious of John, the Lamb of Men, allows no to speak of those, the Lamos and three points, Samson and the Uridis. And of all the holy and mercenaries and healers, of all the righteous answers to God, Judge Manana, and of all your saints. For you are God, the source of healing, and to you we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Glory to your God, glory to you. May 
Christ, our true God, through the intercessions, oh, he may stand. Through the intercession of all, all immaculate and all blameless from the mother, by the power of the precious and life giving cross, that to God the Father, his power from heaven, supplication, the honorable glorious prophet, and forerunner, John the Baptist, of the holy glorious and praiseworthy apostle, and the glorious triumph of martyrs, and preventable God, the ascetic fathers, of the holy righteous ancestors of God, and Joachim and Anna, of St. John, St. Yaakov, the Lord's brother, and of all the saints. Hear the petitions of us sinners and have mercy upon us and save us, for he is a good and merciful God who loves mankind. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. May the Holy Trinity bless, protect, and keep all of you. Please be seated at this time. In just a moment, we're going to have everyone come forward just as a, a, as a public service announcement. Uh, when you come forward, if you have hair over your forehead, I will ask you to please kind of remove it so that I can get to your forehead. Um, I, as was announced back in December, the last time I did an announcement service, um, I am not too old to learn a new trick. <laughs> I'm not an old dog that's too old. Too old. I, have been, I was taught something by Metropolitan Subs that when you do Holy Unction, he not only blesses the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then blesses the hands, but he also blesses the neck. This is how, this is how he taught me to do it. Just, and just this last December. Um, so, or I'm sorry, it was in November when I stopped doing it. Um, so whenever I, whenever I, uh, whenever I bless you with the unction, I'm going to bless under under your chin as well. So when I, whenever, whenever I'm done with the, the your uh, your face, I'm going to go right to your neck before I go to your hands. So it's going to be forehead, chin, cheeks, neck, tops of the hands. Bottoms of the hands. Whenever I bless you, okay. And, and when you are done, there is cotton balls. I am a person that kind of dislikes cotton balls because cotton balls just kind of wipe away the blessing. But if you feel like you need to use them, by all means, please do. I would rather you just rub it in. Just rub it in. If it's there for your healing, rub the whole thing in because that's why it's there. It's there for our healing. It's there for for our uh, ability to. Uh, to be kings and queens and to receive the healing that we need to say. So, uh, that being said, uh, I, I will look forward for all of you approaching. I uh, don't feel badly. Um, I, I know some people uh, are aware that, that the sacrament of holy option is uh, reserved for uh, those who are Orthodox, uh, baptized Orthodox Christians. Those of you who know me well enough don't know that do not be shy to forward anyway. Um, and and I have I always have a, a blessing to give anyone that comes. So just come forward anyway, uh, and, and that's okay. But uh, give your baptismal name. Please give your baptismal name, the name that you were chrismated or baptized under, so that uh, just in case my brain loses it as I'm anointing you, say, say it anyway, because that that'll help me out. So just give me a minute, and I'll be I'll be right with you.